Top Stories, Giles Brandreth and Camilla Tomini. Uh, welcome to both of you. Morning, this morning. morning. Um, report, the Sue Gray report, it's, uh, it's said today, is so damning, Boris Johnson will have to quit. Um, the, the Times has been told that a Whitehall report into lockdown-breaking parties um, says that it, it has been described as excoriating, make things incredibly difficult for the Prime Minister. There's an immense amount of pressure on her. Her report could be enough to end him, bearing in mind that this report has to be delayed until we get the results of the investigation. The investigation has to be delayed until we get the local elections. So you can hear the can being kicked down the street. Yeah, and also I think the word could, could is yeah. doing some heavy lifting <laughs> in this yes, story, it isn't is. it? Yes, he could resign. Is he going to? No, I don't think so. I think he's going to be dragged out of Downing Street kicking and screaming. And equally, who is it really that can oust him? It's his own Tory MPs. We think that these letters of no confidence have gone up in numbers, so I think we might be into the, like, 40s. There needs to be 54, I believe, for mm -hmm. Graham Brady to take action. And even then, he might win the no confidence vote. So I would say Sue Gray is obviously the sort of sword of Damocles, but so are these local elections. Yeah. I think May the 5th will be the true test because Conservatives will be asking themselves, is this bloke a vote winner anymore or is he actually a vote loser? Charles? Mm. Well, he acknowledges errors of judgment for which he has apologised, but he claims there is no evidence that he knowingly misled Parliament. That's what would kill him if he was knowingly to mm -hmm. have misled Parliament. And basically follows the rule of stay standing. We've been talking about this for months. The wind yeah. blows. It blows over him. He's still here. And as you were pointing out to Sakir Starmer, uh, he's only six points ahead in the polls. And that is, you know, it could well be that Boris decides later this year, let's have an election. Let's actually have an election. Get this thing sorted out once and for all. Mm. And finds that he actually wins again. Yeah. So it's not... This story is not over yet. No, and how are you guys I... reporting misogyny in, in Parliament and well, Westminster? Well, um, I did quite a long monologue on it on my LBC show yesterday. The sense that we are going to be judged now, are we, in 2022 on the length of our skirt and whether or not we cross or uncross our legs. I, I, Curious, really. It's, a cu it's curious that a story ended up in a Sunday newspaper, That's I think. That's what I think. Um, and also, I think, the sense that we are still, even today, talking about women's appearance rather than their political ideology and their very clearly well, expressed said it views. Herself when she was on here, she was talking... It's the one thing she was talking about was that I, uh, people talk about what I wear and how I look all the time, and it just gets in the way of her... No, but as you and I know, that job. happens all the time. It, and it happens in relation to men as well. We were chatting about Sakia who obviously is a delightful person. Mm -hmm. It was great to see him on the show. Uh, and But we were saying, oh, should he be wearing a tie or not? <laughs> yeah, we were you know, And I was saying, well, actually, he looks a bit like a silver fox. And so, actually, we do make remarks about men as well. Not we quite the same. No, of course no. not. I, not, no. Not, not certainly I agree, not, not the, the same. This, this appalling... And, you him know, having the... an open shirt wouldn't have been... Oh, is he, is he distracting well, Theresa May at the dispatch? Remember Monsieur you know? Macron only two say, or three weeks yeah. ago, that embarrassing picture of him disporting his hairy chest. Yeah. It actually looked like a chest wig to me. <laughs> but the truth is, there is misogyny <laughs> in the Mon House Dieu. of Commons. I was a Member of Parliament in the 1990s, mm. and it was rife then. It was like an old-fashioned public school for boys. That's how it used to be, and it has not changed sufficiently. And I think Sakir is absolutely right. It is a cultural change that yeah. has to happen. The attitude of people across the board. And fast. Um, let's talk about uh, Trump now, then. He's been quiet for an awful <laughs> long time, and he is back. Uh, Donald Trump has called for the Queen to strip Prince Harry and Meghan Markle of their royal titles. So, uh, he's, I mean, he's never been a fan of Meghan anyway, has he? No. Right from the get-go. He's always been quite opinionated and said things about it. He seems to blame her for all of it. Well, also, he's talking to Piers Morgan, who isn't a fan of Meghan either, so this was a kind of... Um... Not much balance in that chat. Perhaps <laughs> not. Um, and is the Queen going to start stripping them of any more titles? Look, they're not able to use their HRH style when they're in America, but they're still referred to as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex because that was a title that she gave them upon their marriage. And nothing really changes that, even if they're outside of the family. This is the careful balancing act that we've seen witnessed in statements from the Queen, talking about the fact that recollections may vary after the Oprah Winfrey interview, but also saying they remain much-loved members of the family. And we now hear that they probably will take a role in the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. They might not be able to be as official, attend Trooping the Colour in that capacity because they're no longer working royals. But if they're on the balcony, they're on the balcony, aren't they? And I think there are, there are mixed feelings about that behind Palace Gates. But that family... Still family, yeah. This is a promo for Piers Morgan and his new show. <laughs> and um, Donald Trump, old mate, has helped with it. 
and uh, they've had a bit of a row and a ding dong during it. But that's what it is. It's promo for peers, promo for Trump. I don't think we need to take any of it too seriously at all. The Queen is not going. She loves her grandson. Mm. Uh, they've stepped back. They've had certain titles withdrawn from them. Let them carry on. Mm. Google has launched an inclusive language function oh. designed to avoid the use of politically incorrect words. Uh, users typing landlord will see a warning that it may not be inclusive to all readers with a suggestion they should try property owner or proprietor instead. The word humankind is a suggested alternative to uh, what the online giant apparently sees as controversial time ma uh, term mankind. Um, it, it's... It, <laughs> It's, you look at this immediately and think, oh, oh, it's woke. But in actual fact, isn't it time that you started dropping these things? That Yes, there's going to be that clunky period between what we were and what we should be, but it is time to drop these yeah. words. Language has always evolved. Yes. Language has evolved. I just don't know whether this is preoccupying people. I mean, I suppose it's meant to be aimed at women. Are many women complaining because the term mankind is used more than humankind? I don't know. I'm literally... That's a and part rhetorical question. And sometimes these sort of neutral words don't help. To describe someone as a shooter actually doesn't tell the whole story. If it's a gunman or a gunwoman, you learn more about the story. So sometimes, actually, these phrases diminish the information. But, yes, yes. overall, actually, political correctness has been a good thing because it's made us think. It's made us stop and think yeah. and be more inclusive. And my view is, as long as one is kind in intention, and respectful, mm -hmm. actually use the language you want to use. Landlord's a funny turn of phrase, because not every person who actually has a property is a landlord. Of course, the Duke of Westminster does have an awful lot of property. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. He's about the only one we could yeah. call a landlord. <laughs> um, should we talk about sandwiches now? Oh, so, yes. Um... At last we get onto a subject. Are you hungry, I know, I know. Well, this is really what I like talking Go about. Because you tell us, The then. truth is, I, I have to say something about your interview with Sir Keir, which I thought was very good. I find, as an ex-politician, I love see meeting politicians from all parties because when you meet them, yeah. they're actually good-hearted people who mean the best for their country, yeah. whatever party they're from. So when we get off politics and we get on to sandwiches... I thought you were going to tell a star the sandwich anecdote. Like, <laughs> oh, did you know that, <laughs> that he would be the likes peanut there. butter and jam? He well, as it happens, he does <laughs> like peanut no butter idea. and jam. What I do. sandwiches he eats? Because he de he's a veggie. Why so wasn't he... that your first question? What because sandwiches do you eat? Clearly, what, Chris, we could have told a lot about this man. <laughs> well, Peanut butter and um, Well, apparently, if banana. you have a, a chicken tika sandwich, you should oh. fill it with ready-salted crisps. That's the most popular combination. That's, that's, that's popular a chicken combination. tika sandwich. Yeah, if you have a tuna mayo sandwich, uh, you have prawn cocktail crisps. Makes sense. <sighs> Um, fish. A BLT what? has got to be paired with salt and vinegar. Already oh, salty. Um, Weird. What you really want is a fish finger sandwich. Best. Oh, with yeah. ketchup, yeah. fish yeah, fingers, yeah. And, and then plain crisps oh. to give it that little crunch. See, I think it's about the cr texture, not the flavour. It is. When I was thinking of the... F I would never put a crisp in a sandwich to add flavour. It's the texture, it's that yes. crunch. That's yeah. what you want. I suggested egg mayo and smoky bacon. Oh. Ah, now, to be fair, I've never actually tried that. No. But that's, that's quite I think I might be honest. Can I say, you can also get veggie smoky bacon, which is exactly what Sakia needs, because it gives you the smoky and the bacon. Yes. <laughs> it's inclusive, but actually he can still be veggie. Or how about egg mayo and frazzles? Oh, oh, ah, oh hang, on. Got my <laughs> hang on a minute. <laughs> I want to try it. Where are you standing? We'll vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.